Today, I'm going to show you how to build your own 12 volt car battery monitor. This method will actually allow you to monitor any battery from 7 volts all the way up to 24 volts. And no, this will not drain your 12 volt battery because there is a sleep function built in, meaning the device will only measure the voltage every 60 minutes and then go back to sleep. Really slick. Once you get the data, you can easily set up automations or alerts to let you know if your car battery is about to die. That way, you won't be surprised when you are about to go to work only to realize the car needs a jump or have to get an Uber instead. Obviously, this works if you have multiple cars too, allow you to monitor all of the 12 volt battery status. Previously, I showed you how to monitor the 12 volt battery using the Hyundai integration. I was able to monitor my Ionic 5's 12 volt battery. Sadly, the update was not frequent enough and I wanted something totally independent of Hyundai's cloud service. It is only free for the first year, I think, but after that, it's about $150 annually. For this project, you'll need a D1 Mini. If your garage or driveway has poor Wi-Fi coverage, I highly recommend using the D1 Mini Pro. The external antenna will extend your Wi-Fi transmit and receive signal significantly. Micro USB cable to program the D1 Mini. A D1 Mini DC power shield as seen here. You'll need a 1 mega ohm resistor. You can see I took one out of the package here. 200 or 300 kilo ohm resistor. And a 100 milliamp fuse. Since I don't have a 100 milliamp fuse laying around, I'm temporarily using a 1 amp car fuse. I'm going to assume you already have some wires laying around a solder, 12 volt DC power supply, and a 3D printer, which is totally optional, but would be nice. The D1 Mini and Power Shield come unassembled as seen here. You'll need to solder at minimum the corner pins to hold the pins together. Here, 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 and here. Also ground, right here. Because this is the power shield, go ahead and solder VIN right here to the one of the resistor in series with another resistor and ultimately go to A0 right here. On the chip side, go ahead and solder the pins as well at this corner right here. 5 volts, ground, 3V3, RST. Don't forget to solder a small wire from RST to D0 pin right here. This allows the chip to wake itself up, otherwise it will stay in sleep mode forever. Here's a different angle of the power shield. You can clearly see that I didn't solder these pins because we don't need to. With the chip solder and power shield solder like this, you can finally mate them together. Male to female connections. Once you got everything assembled, it should look something like this. Personally, I prefer using the barrel connection actually, right here. If you use this green connector, you'll be wasting time using a Dremel to cut the barrel plug out, solder this green connector on, and if you use this green power connector and need to remove the monitor from your car in the future, you'll need to unscrew the two wires as well. Totally not worth it. Stick with the barrel connection. Finally, if you have a 3D printer, go ahead and print yourself a shell, a cover, to protect all of this. This is of course totally optional, and it only makes the thing nice and pretty, nothing else. Below is the STL file in case you want it. Before we actually deploy this monitor, we need to install the firmware onto the chip. Here is the whole code with ESP Home. Don't worry about pausing the video, I'll have a link down below for you to just copy and paste. I'm going to assume you already know what ESP Home is. If not, check out this video that goes more into the code and how to install the firmware onto the chip. Briefly, the top section is all about your network settings. That part, you gotta edit yourself. The bottom section is how the chip will work and you don't have to edit anything. When you are testing the monitor, don't put it to sleep. But once it is working, then you can put it to sleep. Of course, if you wanted to wake up instantly or report the voltage now, just unplug power and plug power back in. It will jump onto your network, report voltage, go to sleep for one hour, and then wake itself up to report voltage again. The button to toggle sleep on or off is software-wise. So go ahead and go into your Home Assistant settings, go over to 
helpers, click on helpers, create helper, and choose toggle. Name it whatever you want. You can see mine is named Disable Hyundai ESP Home Sleep. Then I create an automation for it. So go ahead and go to settings, go over to automations. You'll create two automation. One of them is manual enable sleep and the other one is disable sleep. Let's go to enable sleep. Enable sleep is when the toggle is flipped to the off position, meaning that you want the monitor to go to sleep. And this is what the code looks like. It's being published via MQTT. Alternatively, when I want to disable sleep on the monitor, I flip that switch to the on position. If that switch is on, then the monitor will work 24 seven every minute. It won't go to sleep at all. And that publishes a MQTT message right here. After assembling the monitor in your house, it's time to connect everything to the car. We are inside the hood of the Ionic 5 right now. Pop the hood up and you should see something like this. The 12 volt battery is right here, but there's no nice spot for me to hide the monitor. If your Wi-Fi coverage is bad, I highly recommend using the D1 Mini Pro and putting the antenna somewhere here near the plastic, somewhere near the windshield, near the plastic, far, far away from the hood that's made of metal. The 12 volt battery has a wire being routed to this right here. You can clearly see that I tap into it. This bolt right here is 10 millimeter. I tap the 12 volts going into this wire, the red, into the fuse, and into this barrel plug. The barrel plug has the ground, and you can see the ground is going out to the ground of the 12 volt battery. This bolt right here is also 10 millimeter as well. And finally, once I plug the monitor in, it works. It reported data instantly. But the data was wrong. We have to calibrate it first. So go ahead and use your multimeter to measure the voltage, the actual voltage between the ground right here and the 12 volt positive right here. Look in Home Assistant and verify if the reported voltage matches your actual voltage. If not, play around with the multiplier as seen here. Hit save and install the new code onto your chip. Once you're satisfied with your multiplier value, it's time to put your chip to sleep and wait for the next reported voltage in 60 minutes. All right, hopefully this video helps you with building your own 12 volt battery monitor. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.